Hi everyone, welcome back to our dynamic programming interview series. Today, we're diving into a classic and very practical algorithm problem, edit distance. So what exactly is edit distance? Edit distance, also known as Levenstein distance, is the minimum number of operations needed to transform one string into another. There are three allowed operations, insert a character, delete a character, or replace a character. And if two characters are already the same, we don't need to do anything. That's called a match, and it doesn't count as an edit. To help you understand, let's walk through a simple example. Suppose we want to turn the word cat into code. Here's one way to do it. First, we keep the C. It matches, so no edit needed. Next, we replace the A with an O. Then, we replace the T with a D. Finally, we insert an E at the end. That's three operations, two replacements and one insertion. And there's no way to do it with fewer edits, so the edit distance from cat to code is three. Don't underestimate this problem. It shows up in spell check, autocorrect, DNA sequence alignment, and even keyword matching in search engines. It's also a favorite in technical interviews at major tech companies. Now the question is, how do we actually compute the edit distance between two strings? One approach you might think of is brute force recursion. That means we try every possible combination of edits and choose the one with the fewest steps. Here's what the brute force version looks like in Python. The code is straightforward. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look if you're curious. The logic is simple, but the performance is terrible. Why? Because at every character, we have three choices, and each of those choices creates more branches. As the strings get longer, the number of possible paths grows exponentially. That's a lot of redundant work. Some of you might have already noticed this. Brute force recursion does a ton of repeat calculations. And that's exactly where we can optimize it, by using dynamic programming. One way is top-down dynamic programming, or memoization. That means we still use recursion, but we store results of subproblems we've already solved. If we see the same subproblem again, we just reuse the stored result instead of computing it again. Here's the memoized version of the recursive code. After applying memoization, the time complexity drops from exponential to O m times n, where m and n are the lengths of the two strings. The performance improves dramatically. If you're interested, pause the video and explore how the code works in more detail. Another optimization is bottom-up dynamic programming, also known as the tabulation method. This is the main focus of today's video. The core idea is simple. Solve smaller problems first, store their results in a table, and build up to the final answer step by step. Let's walk through how to use this table method to turn the string horse into rows using the fewest edits. First, we create a 2D grid. Each row represents the first I characters of horse, and each column represents the first J characters of Roz. The zeroth row and the zeroth column handle the cases involving empty strings. The zeroth row shows how many insertions we need to build up to R, RO, and ROS from an empty string. So we fill that row with 0, 1, 2, 3. The zeroth column shows how many deletions we need to reduce H, HO, HOR, and so on down to an empty string. So that column gets 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What about the rest of the table? Each cell, at row I and column J, represents the minimum number of operations needed to turn the first I characters of string A into the first J characters of string B. If the current characters are the same, we simply copy the value from the top left diagonal cell, that's DP at I minus one, J minus one, because no operation is needed. If the characters are different, we have three choices. First, insert. We look at the left cell, that's DP at I, J minus one, and add one. Second, delete. We check the cell above, that's DP at I minus one, J, and add one. Third, replace. We look at the top left diagonal, that's DP at I minus one, J minus one, and add one. Then we take the minimum of these three values and fill it into the current cell. Since all three choices add one, we can simply take the minimum of the three neighbors and add one. We fill the table row by row and column by column. Once we reach the bottom right cell, we have our answer, 
the minimum edit distance. Let's go through the actual filling process. We start with the first row. The current character from horse is H. At the first cell, we're comparing H and R, they're different. So we look at the three neighboring cells, left, top, and top left. The smallest value is zero, so we take that and add one. This cell now becomes one. Next, H and O, again, they're different. We look at the neighboring cells. The smallest is one, plus one gives us two. So we fill in two. Last cell of this row, H and S, still different. The minimum among the neighbors is two, so this one becomes three. Next row, the character from horse is O. First cell, comparing O and R, different again. Minimum of neighbors is one, plus one makes two. Next, O and O, a match. So we just copy the diagonal value, which is one. We continue this process row by row. Eventually, when we reach the bottom right cell, we find the value is three. That's our answer. It takes three operations to turn horse into rows. Now, how do we trace back the actual operations that make up this minimum distance? We start from the bottom right corner of the table and move backwards. At each step, we figure out which operation got us to the current cell. If the characters match, no operation is needed. We note that the character is kept and move diagonally to the top left. If they don't match, we check which neighbor plus one gives the current value. If it's the diagonal, that's a replacement. If it's the left, that's an insertion. If it's the top, that's a deletion. We record the operation, then move in that direction. For example, the last character is E versus S. They don't match. The current cell comes from the one above, plus one. That means a deletion. So we record delete E and move up. Next, both characters are S. That's a match. We keep S and move diagonally up left. And so on. We keep backtracking until we reach the top left corner. By the end, we'll have a complete list of operations. Keep in mind, there might be more than one valid path. The edit distance is unique, but the exact sequence of operations might have multiple solutions. Here's the full Python implementation using the tabulation method. It has three parts. First, the DP table computation to find the minimum edit distance. Then, the backtracking logic to reconstruct the sequence of operations. And finally, an example showing how to call the function and print the results. The time and space complexity are both O of M times N, where M and N are the lengths of the two strings. If you're interested, pause the video and walk through the code line by line to really understand how the algorithm works. All right, that's it for the edit distance problem. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with anyone preparing for coding interviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.